What exactly causes pressure in a fluid? Let's, let's think about that. For that, let, let's take a container with a fluid that is static. Consider a cylindrical volume of water of height h and area a. Okay? Now, draw the FBD, the free body diagram, for this cylindrical volume of water. What are the forces acting on it? Of course, there'll be like if they, there will be two forces, one from the top and one from the bottom, right? That is, see, there'll be a force that the that the column above it is applying on it from on top. And of course, there'll be a force from the bottom as well. We can say it's a normal force. What else? There should be one more force, right? Of course, there'll be gravity. So, if we consider vertical equilibrium, we know that this cylinder is in equilibrium, it's not moving. So, if we consider vertical equilibrium, what would be the equation? It would be F2 minus F1 equals mg, where m is the mass of this cylindrical volume of water. Right? Okay? Now, if I divide both sides by A, what do I get? Now, if you're wondering why I'm doing it, just wait. So if I divide it, what do I get? I get F2 by A minus F1 by A equals mg by A. Okay? Now, from our definition, what is F2 by A? So F2 by A is basically the average pressure that the bottom surface is feeling, right? Okay? And similarly, F1 by A is the average pressure that the top surface is feeling, right? Okay? So if I call them P2 and P1, so the equation becomes, if I replace it, it becomes P2 minus P1 equals Mg by A. Okay? Now, what about M? M we know is the mass of this volume. And if I have to write it in terms of density, it's just density into this volume, right? So, which is nothing but rho into A into H, because A H is the volume of this cylinder of water. So therefore, if I replace that in that equation, I get P2 equals P1 plus rho G H. So we can see that this pressure difference is independent of A. So that means this would be true irrespective of how small the area is. So if I consider an extremely thin cylinder, such that the magnitude of the area tends to zero, like this, then even in this case, P2 should be equal to P1 plus rho GH. But here, P1 is the pressure at that point 1, and P2 is the pressure at that point 2. So, we basically proved that the difference in pressures between two points, separated by a height H in a fluid, is rho GH. So, what happened if the cylinder is moved such that the top surface of the cylinder coincides with the top surface of the fluid. Okay? So we've seen that a column of fluid exerts a pressure, and we also know that air is a fluid. So by the same logic, pressure at this point would be the pressure because of the weight of the air above it. So let's call this atmospheric pressure, or P0. Now, we'll talk about this in great detail in a while. But right now, we find out that pressure at that point, let's say P2, is equal to P0 plus rho GH, where H is the depth of the point from the surface. So we now know how to find the pressure at a point in a fluid, and also that it depends only on the depth from the surface. Okay? But wait a minute. This formula also means that if I take two points at the same depth, or basically two points on a horizontal line, the pressures will be exactly the same. Okay? In fact, this can easily be proved if I consider a thin horizontal cylinder like this, where dA tends to zero. Now, because the fluid is static, net force has to be zero. So if the forces from the sides are F1 and F2, then for horizontal equilibrium, F1 has to be equal to F2. Now, if we assume the pressure at these points to be P1 and P2, then F1 should be equal to P1 dA, and F2 should be equal to P2 dA, right? Now, if I replace that in th that equation, I get P1 dA equals P2 dA, and therefore I get P1 equals P2. So, this is just another simple way of proving exactly the same thing. One thing to keep in mind though, is that these pressures are not average pressures, but pressures at those points because DA is very small. For more videos and live lectures on the JEE, click on the subscribe button now.